So my name is Glenn Reynolds. I am the uh, domain lead for our manage set of tools. If uh, for those of you that have been in this track, uh, I recognize a few faces, a few new ones. So this is the overall flow for the capital uh, set of tools, all the way from logical architecture design through um, electrical distribution, engineering, uh, embedded software of in-vehicle networks, and out into uh, harness manufacturing and into the service domain. So. Um, so this is kind of the full suite of tools. What I'm going to cover in this presentation today is really that center section of manage. So the section that goes across and under and underpins the rest of the capital tools. And I'll also talk about the integrations, both um, Team Center and Annex integrations into Capital and um, what we're doing there, why we're doing it, and, and give you some examples of, um, of what that looks like. So that's what the, the focus of this presentation here will be on today is, is uh, these sections. So when we talk about uh, these five domains of capital that um, hopefully you've seen across this, um, you know, from early logical definition of architecture to the design, manufacturing, and, um, and onto the technical pubs, manage kind of sits in the middle of that. And, and you know, the challenge here is we are providing electrical design environment. Um, this isn't a schematic tool, um, standalone. What we're trying to underpin here is the digital thread across this entire set of tools and to our adjacent um, domains, out to ECAD or out to MCAD, out to the other domains. So the challenge here is, is providing this in a scalable way, providing the infrastructure that holds on to all of this data that allows capital to do its model-based engineering. And, and that's really what you know, some of the, the main focus of capital is, of the managed side is, is its ability to hold on to those models. And we've talked a lot uh, over the last couple days about that model-based engineering. So not only is capital, or is the managed section of it, providing that the underlying, the underpinnings, the ability to manage the data, the security of the data, the user administration and their related security aspects, um, but also one of the main things that it does is it manages those models, those assets that we use as we go through and transform from um, abstraction to abstraction to abstraction. So we've seen a couple examples of this over the last couple of days. If, if anyone was in uh, Nigel's session yesterday on electrical design, we were looking at generative design and what the inputs are to that. So you know, rules and rule-based systems, where are all those rules held? they're held in this managed database that provides access. Uh, earlier today, we were talking about the harness um, and produce side of things and looking at being able to take a model of a factory and what it takes to push a, a, a harness design through that factory and generate a bill of process. That model of the factory is managed here in this central location, and we provide that access out to the tools to, to access it, but also to manage the life cycle of those other assets that are coming in and participating in that flow. So the other piece of this is, like I said, we have, the, we have a digital thread throughout the electrical flow, but we need a digital thread out to the rest of the organization, out to the rest of the data. And that's what this managed piece of it also takes care of, is those integrations out to MCAD, the integrations out to Team Center, so that we can have an unbroken digital thread. You know, we have, we have one within the electrical, we need it across the product. So that's what, uh, that's what we're trying to do here, and that's one of the main focuses of what this uh, domain does. Um, we have a number of products in here that, that um, deal with that, but really fundamentally that's what we're trying to do with, the, with these capabilities. So there's kind of two of these fundamental roles that, that Manage uh, maintains. So one is, as I said, that the database, the objects, the relationships. How do we quickly and effectively navigate through the electrical objects and provide that digital thread? How do I understand that if a functional block in uh, all the way up in the early architecture or a connection between two functions, how did it manifest itself into a connection between uh, device 
devices. How did it manifest itself into a set of wires? Where did that go down into a harness design? If there's uh, derivative designs, where did it go? So the ability to trace the, the history of an object from its earliest um, time up in a functional design out through a wire that's implemented in a harness and maybe for a particular variant of that harness. So, so that's the, the data aspect of this that, that we manage. And, and we get questions a lot about um, you know, Team Center and Team Center's role in this, right? Team Center does a lot of it. This underpinning is, is really the fundamental of how capital provides this integrated and automated electrical design environment. So we, we do integrate, and I'll talk later about the integration with, um, with Team Center and the data that we exchange with it. But, um, but providing that environment for our, for our uh, electrical design is really at the heart of what we're doing here. The other piece of that is on the controlling the workflow and, and how you go about design. And this falls into you know, the access, the security. Um, you know, is my design released? If it's not released, what state is it in? What's next? There's a tight coupling there to what uh, Team Center will do in workflow, and we'll integrate those two together. But one of the other main things that this does is, is beyond the configuration and customization is the integration. So we provide the integration out to NX, to Team Center, and I'll talk more about that, and kind of focus in on that um, as, we, uh, as we go through this presentation, um, as opposed to the, the other underlying technologies. So a couple of uh, data points here of, uh, of a survey done a couple of years ago. So 71% you know, of designs are increasing in electrical content. Really not a big surprise, right? When you look at our mega trends that are going on, you know, the increased electrical because of autonomous drive, just the number of features that people are looking in, in automobiles, um, consumer products, everywhere where we see uh, our products used, basically the, in the increase in electrical content is significant and, um, and increasing. We, we don't expect this to go down at all. If you think of the, the mechanical side of this, and the, this question is, you know, what, um, you know, how much time could you save with better integrations between your MCAD and ECAD? You know, 83% of designers said, I'd, I'd improve my design time by having better integration between ECAD and MCAD. You know, and you look up here at, you know, 41% up at 10% or above would gain um, in design time. So significant uh, problem that people are identifying and saying, you know, we could in improve our design time and likewise our overall development schedule by having the integrated tools between ECAD and MCAD to do that design. And a lot of this is driven because of uh, ECAD has typically been a kind of an afterthought in a lot of cases. It gets added in late, it's integrated late. Um, mechanical usually is the, is the thing that drives the uh, product. And you know, if there's is issues late in the electrical, they're just dealt with. We, we do things to make the product work. So what we're trying to do here is, is say, you know, given these significant benefits that we see, what can we do to bring in capital and to improve that integration back between MCAD and your electrical tools? So this is a very high level. It's a uh, view of kind of the integrations that we have across capital sitting in the middle out to NX and Team Center. And we have multiple ways of interacting with uh, with the mechanical tools. Um, so we can do a direct connection between a capital and, a, uh, and an NX application where the two designers can sit side by side and understand you know, where does this wire physically go from a wiring design from a high level, you know, where does it go in this actual 3D model? Is it running somewhere that's close to uh, power sources that I'm going to have to protect it? Is it running in a wet zone where I'm going to have to add more protection? So being able to have these electrical and mechanical guys sitting side by side and looking at the two environments provides a lot of benefit. 
We also have ways of integrating this back that come through Team Center for uh, a little bit more controlled access. We have, um, and, and we've got some other technology coming on, you know, how to how to get these integrations together. So I'd like to talk a little bit about the far left side of this actually to start. So the integrations to Team Center. So. We have a number of integrations that are shipped, delivered, in use uh, in the industry, and um, we have a nice little backlog of other stuff that um, we will continue to work on as we, uh, as we continue on with the integrations. So the, the thing we're trying to accomplish here with the Team Center integration is getting the electrical models fully in the life cycle of the rest of the entire product. We have to have them in configuration control. We have to have the bills of materials for them. We have to be able to, to integrate the electrical into that full team center managed set of data. So that's really what we're trying to accomplish on the left-hand side is that all stages of the electrical design, being able to interact and, and um, put that data into team center. Um, there's other places where we take data out of team center as the source. So uh, configuration management. So product configurator is a tool in, in uh, team center. So we have an integration that we can bring in that configuration data um, and it drives, that's one of the inputs that drives a lot of our automation. So that's a model that actually sits out in team center that we interact with and pull the data from. And there's a number of examples of those, those types of data that the source lives in Team Center. We need to consume it to drive the automation. On the left-hand side, we've got a, uh, the integrations to NX. And really what we're trying to do here is, I'd say, integrate early, integrate often. Right, so instead of waiting until late in our design process to start these integrations with electrical, let's move it as far as we possibly can up in the design chain. The space reservation piece is even before we have wires. I've got, I know I've got main CPUs uh, spread around my vehicle in aerospace. I know where my LRUs are basically placed. I know my logical definition. I know the point-to-point -point connectivity between those boxes. I haven't turned them into wires yet. I'm early in this space. So how do I claim space early on so that when we get to the end, we actually have enough room to do our wiring and actually install the wiring in the vehicle and not end up taking unoptimal routes so that affect the electrical, which makes us go back and redesign the electrical because of other um, EMC or uh, you know, wire length issues. So, so as we go through this um, from kind of the top to the bottom there on those capital integrations, they're at really every step of the electrical design process what's the right thing to interact with on the mechanical world to ensure that when we get to the end, we don't have a big integration issue. It just comes together. So at the, like I said, at the high level, that's really what we're, we're trying to get to. So what I'd like to do is, is um, I don't have a lot of other content on kind of this team center and, and that integration side of it So um, in this. So what I want to do is, is actually show a little video that kind of gives you an illustration of, you know, what does that integration look like over to team center and, and hopefully visualize it um, a little bit more. So um, what this will run through is um, kind of this set of integrations on the left-hand side. The main thing that we use as our integration point into Team Center is the active workspace. So what we've done is brought active workspace into all of our design tools, all of our engineering tools, and integrated it as the direct view into uh, Team Center. They're integrated in a uh, context sensitive way. So if I select a design in Capital and I say, you know, open Team Center and go find, it says, go find the thing I have selected. If I've selected data that's attachments in Team Center and that particular application knows what to do with it, I've got context sensitive menus that say, I understand what to do with this data in the context of the design that I'm doing and the data that's sitting in Team Center. So um, be context sensitive. So it's not just um, like another window brought up side by side that's unaware of where you're at. We're using the active workspace deeply embedded and, and interacting with it. 
So that's what we'll see here as we, as we move on is um, this is the Capital Logic tool, this is uh, uh, wiring designs. So the ability to actually uh, publish that design out to Team Center and from the active workspace within the design applications directly going into Team Center, looking at the structure, looking at the relationships, understanding how this data is related to the rest of the data in your Team Center environment. So it gives us that, that window in. Gives us the ability also to take, we store the model of that logical design in Team Center. We can bring that model back out and into the active design environment and use it. Usually we'll do this as a copy so we know what configuration we have. So we'll move on here to, uh, to kind of a, that managed integration with NX or any MCAT application. So we have the ability here to put out PLM XML of a harness. That harness can be split again across multiple wiring diagrams, but the ability to extract the wiring for a particular harness, store it directly into Team Center, so that NX can come back along and augment it. So this would be your components and connectivity. Team, or sorry, NX can pick it up out of Team Center, define the physical connectivity for it, put that back in. From our harness tools, we can come back into this, go into Team Center, find that PLM XML that's in a configuration controlled environment. And because we know we're in harness, we can use our change management tool to actually bring this in to do 3D flattening on it. And I'll cover a little bit more on this change management as we, as we get in. And finally, the ability to just from a engineered harness push the bill of materials out to Team Center and from Team Center the ability to go um, see that bill of materials. So integrated with the mechanical bill of materials as well. So what's my bill of materials for a harness? Well, um, an NX model isn't the full answer. There's a lot more detail that goes behind the, the engineered harness than just the components. There's, you know, what are all the terminals that have been selected for every cavity? And this is a lot of the automation that goes on in the capital side is, how do I get all of this ready to actually go to manufacturing? So that's, that's kind of a, a quick, um, a quick walkthrough of, of the integration on the team center side of that. The rest of this presentation, I'm actually going to focus over on the NX integration side and a couple of examples leading on from what we talked about in earlier sessions over the last two days. So in, uh, in Nigel's section on electrical design yesterday morning, how many of you guys were in that, that section? Okay, a few. So in this, we're talking about generative design, so platform level generative design. And if we talk about that, that generative design, basically what we say is we have at the platform level a full model of whatever the vehicle is that we're doing. We are going to take a set of constraints, a set of other models, and use automation to produce the next set of outputs. So what are we taking into this generative flow? Well, one of the biggest things is we're taking in those logical designs, the representations, the point-to-point -point connectivity that says, here's the connectivity that needs to be implemented in that physical platform. Then we take in a set of rules. These rules define how I go about transforming that wiring. Should I use splices? Should I not use splices? Should I use multi-terms? What's the minimum distance between these splices? What's the routing constraints on a signal based on uh, primary and secondary uh, systems? So this whole set of rules and constraints is the IP that we capture that says, how do I do this transformation? And this is a, uh, the huge piece of this is capturing that knowledge and once again, that's a model and, and managed. Um, we can also take in just device interfaces to this, but that's all of kind of the logical and transformation side. 
the other piece of it is we need the mechanical constraints. We need to understand what the, what the bundles look like, what are their lengths. So when we're routing wires, we have real lengths that we can deal with that say, you know, what's, what's better to way to route this wire? What's the shortest path for it? And that's our default for how we route is, well, I'll find the shortest path unless there's rules that tell me not to and drive it in some other way. So we need that physical context in which to do the generation. So that's what we're, um, we're actually pulling from the mechanical side of that. And I'll, um, I'll go through an example of, of that. The other piece is now once we've actually generated this wiring, then uh, and it's generated within that platform level view, uh, where does it go? Well, there's multiple places, multiple outputs that we can take from that platform level view. We can actually generate the physical schematics, a graphical representation of the physical schematics. We've generated the connectivity, the wiring at the detail, but there's many times for things like design review, for technical publications, people want to see schematics. And so this is kind of an optional piece of this generative flow that basically everybody does because these wiring diagrams and wiring schematics are kind of part of the process. We can also take the, uh, the harness definitions straight out of integrator and off into the harness design tools. Um, we'll generate the service documentation based on all of that information. So this is a, uh, an example of, you know, we take a set of inputs, we apply some rules uh, to a set of models, we generate another set of outputs, they go to various places. One additional place where we'd like to be able to put that is back onto the mechanical side. So we've generated the wires, we understand what the wiring is, how do we get that information back onto the mechanical side so we can do that cross-highlighting, understanding where the wire paths are, understanding the physical environment that this is in? So that's one of the big things that, that, uh, that we come out of this with on the integration side is you know, NX feeds in basically bundle topology, gets back out wiring. Now we're doing a lot of work and releasing some things where we're trying to change the game a little here and say, um, do you really need wiring in NX? Mm, maybe, I know lots of people's processes depend on it now, but what if you didn't? What if you could do the same sorts of things? What if you could get all your bundle diameter calculations just put back into the electrical or the mechanical model but without actually holding the wires and having to do the wire routing and dealing with splicing and things like that that are, um, I'd say, suboptimal in mechanical design tools, but it's what the capital tools are built to do. So we're changing, we're, we're allowing some um, flexibility here as we move forward in process. And, and I think it'll be a journey as we move forward because many people's process today is all of this information lives in NX. We'll, um, we'll provide opportunities to make that not the case. So um, what I wanted to do here is, uh, is show a quick little video of um, kind of illustrating this, this use case that we were talking about and that, uh, that they walked through in the, in the electrical side uh, yesterday. So in this case, we'll have, um, we've already brought in the, the physical harnesses um, and they've done the synthesis. So the question is really we're at this point where we say we, we've got the, the synthesized wiring. How do I get that information back into the mechanical side and how do I control that? So play a little video here. So um, capital on the right, MCAD, uh, NX on the left. We're going to focus in here on an IP harness that is empty. For those of you who know NX, I think we'll look at the uh, component and electrical navigators. Um, they're empty. We don't, have, we don't have wiring. We don't have that information. We've gone into a direct connect mode from Capital and basically said, uh, bridge out the IP harness because that's the active work part in NX. That data goes directly over. Um, there is work to do to get these component names to align. It's, you know, if you're talking about the same objects, we need to get the alignment. We can bring that in from, from this wiring 
populate those electrical components. And then once we've got them populated, we can start doing some cross selection. I can say, you know, where, where does this connector physically live? If you look at, at the integrator view of this world, it's a very abstracted view. All of the wiring is kind of hidden behind here. What we're looking at is bundle paths. So it can be kind of difficult to understand well, where, did, where did those wires go, where are they? So this kind of gives the, the engineers a way to surface that and not only say, you know, what does my wire route look like just in the integrator side, but what's that wire route look like actually on the 3D side as well. Same wire, we're just doing different representations of the, um, of the paths. So what we've ended up here with is, you know, we would have started with that NX model, brought it into integrator to define the bundle structure that you have, generate the wiring in the context of that with the rules, push the resulting wires back into NX to populate the model. So that's, uh, that's one example of, of just this, you know, back and forth, the exchange of the data between these models. I'll take another example here and, uh, and talk about the produce side of this. So, um, so this is about harness engineering. Once I've actually got that harness and I've got it out of NX, or sorry, out of um, integrator, and I bring it into, uh, into harness XC, I'll do that harness detailing. And what always happens after we've made that first pass and done all this work, a change, of course, and that's what always happens here. So what we'd like to talk about here is about change management. How do we actually propagate a change all the way through the mechanical side, all the way through the electrical side and in a um, controlled fashion? And that's the, the fundamental of capital and its, its change management is controlled change management. How do I understand who owns what types of data in this integration? Am I defining my uh, bundle coverings, my tape and my tube on the mechanical side and bringing them into Harness XC? Or am I defining them in Harness XC and pushing them um, back out and, and, um, and needing to bring in that electrical model? So what we have in, the, um, in this change management is a very detailed way of saying, when I exchange data with um, with the MCAD world, who's the owner? Down to the object and attribute level. So what we really want to do also is, is encourage uh, concurrent design. I, I want my MCAD guys to be able to go off and do work at the same time my electrical is progressing. But we recognize there will be change and how do we bring that change back in in a very managed fashion and, and don't destroy this work in progress that's been done and value add that's been done on both sides. So that's what, we're, uh, that's what we're trying to accomplish here. So if we talk about uh, the harness engineering and, and it relies, once again, on the physical harness. That physical harness could be uh, synchronized into integrator and then brought directly over to uh, harness. It can be directly bridged in from MCAD and into the harness. So what I'll show here is, is you know, we've got to extract these discrete harnesses and push a change through. And um, for those of you that were in these uh, earlier sessions, we showed an example of this being driven all the way up from the functional design and a change and implementing that change in integrator. What I'd like to do is say, okay, now let's take that and let's look at a little bit more detail about how we would also bring that change fully into Harness XC and some of these managed change um, capabilities. So once again, NX on the left, capital Harness XC on the right. Um, we'll see that uh, we're going to create a new revision of this IP harness. Because of the changes all the way up in the functional designs that drove through into the electrical, um, we need another revision of this. So create a revision of that in Harness XC and what we'll do is just put that into a build list so we can uh, easily access it later on. This is revision one of the harness uh, that, uh, that my colleague showed in the uh, previously. So 
how do I go, I've, I've made my mechanical changes on the left hand side. I go into direct connect mode and say, um, I'd like to pull in these changes. Lots of things it's determined are the same. And if we go say, well, what about the connectors? There were a couple of connectors added over on the, um, or a couple of bundles added and connectors. So what's just the external things, connectors and bundles that are coming in, and how do I bring that in? So these are these change policies that I was referring to. In this case, what we'll actually do is because we've added all of the insulations and clips and things on the harness side, we'll actually say, we're not gonna bring those in. Um, bundles, absolutely, we want bundles, we want nodes. Uh, in this case, we don't, want, uh, we, we don't want to create the connectors, they're already there, and we don't wanna um, bring wires in either. My wiring is gonna come from the uh, R2 of the integrator plane. So let's synchronize that in, and what we see is, well, our connectors showed up, they showed up at scale, and in their 3D locations, okay? Pretty easy to see where they are. You can also see that that new connector has no wiring. Uh, I haven't brought the wiring in from integrator yet. This is purely the mechanical change. So now let's bring the wiring in from integrator, and once again, let's use a change policy that says, what data should I bring forward from capital uh, integrator? And in this case, I want just the wiring. I'm not going to bring the mechanical in. I just brought it in from my MCAD system. So with that change policy, we can synchronize that into the, the revision two of the integrator, revision two of this harness design, and let's get the electrical content brought in. Let's get the electrical content brought in, thank you. So now when we open this up and we look at those places where we had the, uh, the connectors, now I've got wiring for those. I brought the wiring system in from my wiring design and, and synthesis, married them together with the harness from 3D and, and slotted this in. Lots more capabilities around in this harness design that we saw and, and you know, you'd go do a little bit of cleanup to integrate those changes together and we'll move on. So just a kind of a quick example here of this interactions and uh, back and forth. Multiple touch points from early on to later with, um, with Capital and NX managed change control across that whole piece. So what do we have, um, right? Capital with its managed capabilities is the foundation for this whole thing, for the whole electrical design environment, the whole model-based engineering environment is managed. Co-design is important. We see it in, in real life. We see it in these surveys. You know, everybody we go out and talk to has this integration issue. They've got to be able to get the electrical and the physical back together. And we've got these deep integrations, both with NX and Team Center. We're moving forward with those integrations on both sides of it, and we will uh, we'll provide those, we'll, we'll extend them out as, as time goes forward. But this is existing today, it's not just future stuff.